Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jess and Julie's podcast. I am Julie. I am Jessica, or Jess. I like that you said Jess. Jess? Yeah. I call you Jess. I know. So it's like a, yeah. it's like a thing. Do you like to go by Jessica? Not really. Oh. I actually don't even really like the name. Really? Yeah. I'm trying to think if I ever call you Jessica. <laughs> Thinking time is over. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. We're also sipping mimosas. Yeah, and I so. took a very large sip <laughs> and then just stared at her. That was awkward. <laughs> Um, you know, too bad this isn't a video. Yeah, only some people call like Eric calls me Jessica. Eric is my I, fiance, newly, newly uh, fiance, proclaimed fiance. Yes, that's very exciting. Congratulations! But thanks, Jules. See, You're I don't welcome. call you Jess. Julie. No, ever. that's weird. That sounded weird to say Julie. Yeah, to hear it come out of your mouth. Oh, if I talk about you, I say Julie's doing this, right. blah blah blah, but I would say that Maybe that's cuz I talk about you. you and say Jessica. Huh. Usually I say Jessica Fascinating. Shelby, just to, you know, clarify. Yes. There's a lot of Jessicas. This I thought a... Eric called you JS. No, he like if he talks about me, he'll call me JS. Okay. But he won't say that to my face. Oh, okay. All of his friends call me that. Okay. Weird. This is not the point of the podcast. That's interesting. Though. No, this podcast is about free things that that's free. F R E E, not the number three, because in my <laughs> mind they sound exactly the same when I say them. <laughs> free things that you can take part in in Los Angeles. And our yes. research for this and our field work has actually been a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more free things to do in LA than I would have ever thought. Than I ever thought. And not like just your typical stuff. That's what we're no. trying not to do. Just like, oh, you could head to First Fridays in Venice. It's free. Like everybody knows about First Fridays but, like, or like art really walks free and stuff. Unless you like go by First Fridays, if you don't know, is when you go there a bunch of food trucks gather in Venice. But like you can go look at the food trucks for free, but like right. you can't eat for free. Like they don't well, pass out free food. You could get alcohol for free. The art galleries. Where? Yeah, the art galleries. What? Yeah. Well, I haven't been there in years, so maybe they don't do this anymore. Wow, I might be missing out. Yeah. And I've been to First Fridays. My boyfriend's name is Andy. He took me to First Fridays, I don't know, like a year ago maybe now? And I did not know you could get free alcohol anymore. Yeah, if you go in the art galleries, they usually serve free wine, sometimes free snacks. And then other people that live there, like, there'll be, like, apartment complexes that are also on um, Abbott Kenny, and they usually have a party at the same time, and you just walk in and what? partake in their stuff, too. I thought it was Granted, literally just Granted, I did that five years ago. It was the last time. Okay. So, maybe it's That's just... That's not that trips. long ago, though. If you had done it, like, 15 years ago, I'd be like, wow, it's not you know, going to be the old. same now. <laughs> you just be like, and you're, you're ancient. And yeah. why are we friends? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anyways, well, Julie and I met... Uh, at work. Yes. We three years ago? Yeah. Four I started working there in 2011. So three years ago, wow. which is crazy. High five on a long crazy friendship. Crazy town. I know. And when I saw this girl, I was like, this girl's insane. Yeah. And I saw this girl and I was like, well, I almost made a racist joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll save it for when we're not recording. <laughs> Sweet. You can say that. I said, I said, well, this girl's black, so obviously don't want to be her friend. Right, and I just kept hammering it in. Yeah. And I was like, we need to be friends, we need to yeah. be friends. Yeah. I'm black We're as going... well, so I get to make these friends. <laughs> nope. We're going to hashtag this podcast, <laughs> Julie's a racist. <laughs> hashtag Julie's a racist. Question mark. Hashtag Julie's not black. <laughs> exclamation point. It's unclear. Uh, but yeah, we just wanted to give you a little bit of a background on how we met. Um, mm -hmm. and became friends and, and we actually sustained yes stayed friends because yeah. actually here's the article that I mentioned to you earlier mm. um I get LinkedIn updates I don't remember uh, it's like linked up or something and it like keeps you like in the know because you know people write like blogs and like publish articles and and, yeah, yeah like I think that's what it's called I could be wrong um but so it's every week or like every two weeks. I don't really keep a close eye on it. But every once in a while, they'll send an email and, you know, the headings will, like the article titles will be in uh, the email body. And so then I click on the ones that sound interesting. And there was one about uh, this girl's biggest regret after quitting her job. Jessica no longer works for the company that we met at anymore. Yeah. So we've like actually kept our real friendship going. 
which I'm very thankful for because this girl, I guess, her story was that she had developed a relationship with this guy, just a friendship, a friendship with this guy. She and I think her friend's name was Randy. Uh, And then this other guy's name was John and John was their supervisor. Um, And they started going to lunches together and they really like liked his company. And then she quit her job and she didn't keep in touch with John as much as she had wanted to. Um, And then John ended up getting cancer. Not to bring this whole thing down. I was like, (laughs) and now we've taken a chance. I should have just given a broad overview and now everybody's going to cry. Yeah. (laughs) He ended up getting cancer and she like just for some reason like still didn't reach out to him because it had Mm -hmm. been so many years since she talked to him. she felt awkward about it. Yeah. And like in retrospect she was like I'm sure he would have appreciated any kind of contact and he ended up passing away without like her the, okay this was really sad I should have you know thought about it <laughs> yeah. but like, it's not like you know it's wah, just a wah. good lesson to learn like I really liked that she wrote about that because I think it's something that not everybody would consider when they're leaving you know you don't leave and say oh I should keep in touch with this person because what if they you know pass away But, like, you could let a perfectly good friendship go to waste. Like, your friendship is very special to me. And, like, I was really scared for a little... Thanks, friend. I was scared for a little bit that, like, we would lose touch, and I'm glad that we haven't. Yeah, well, because when you work with someone for 40 hours a week, if Mm -hmm. not more, like, you see them all the time, and that time, you spend more time with them than you might spend with a significant other family member or other friend. So you learn a lot about that person, and sort of feels like a family yeah and you know both of us have been on sets it's sort of, or like been in plays it's sort of that same thing where like you feel so tight and then you're like we gotta still keep hanging out and then it never, you never happens do. it never works out life that way. just continues and there's a bunch of jobs that i've had where you feel so close to those people mm-hmm. and, and even if you keep in touch for a few years like when there's more and more time removed and distance. Then and you have other little effort. families too. Exactly. you're it moving just on. and gets to be so hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate the article. It yeah. It's a bit of a downer. It's a little making bit. me want to drink more mimosas. Hey, okay, Plank. Cheers. Plank. <laughs> 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 Love those mimosas. <laughs> no, but it was, it was very insightful. But so today. Yes. Um, continue. I feel like this also is like a, a good way to like keep our friendship going because yeah. we know that we have to meet up and we have to like I may never have wanted to see you again but now I know I have, have to see to, you so we, we can do this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um so Jessica found this archery class and I have a secret dream to be Katniss. Well, who doesn't? That's really. true. Even yeah. the guy behind the guy standing behind me wanted to be Katniss too. <laughs> really? Today? He was like, Oh yeah. He was like, Yeah, we all want to be Katniss. It's not just Katniss though that she is she the only one in Hunger Games that shoots That a bow uses and a bow and arrow? I think she is, yeah. yeah. None of the guys ever pick it up. Um, maybe Gail also uses a bow and arrow. Yeah. But he's not in the games. In the games. Right. But I but when think they go maybe hunting, he does archery as well. Maybe. Yeah, I think he does. I could be wrong. Any diehard uh, Hunger, Hunger Games, Games I read all the books. I'm not just so a movie fan. But like... <laughs> just had to be on the same level Liar. playing. Did yeah. you really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Um, Good. I won't judge you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, any diehard <laughs> fans, let us know because I have no idea really. Leave it in the comments below. I don't even know what format this is going to be in real yeah. time, but... <laughs> yeah. Somehow I'll leave it as a comment. Yeah. And by fans, we mean probably just Eric and Andy. Right, yeah. The only and Andy, I don't think, has ever read The Hunger Games, so he's out. Eric did. Really? Okay, good. Yeah. Eric, you need to find that answer. I don't know if he read the third one, though. No, yeah, well, it'll probably did. be in the first one. Oh, yeah. So, read the first half so of the book sad, and tell he reads so many more books than I do. I had a goal this year to read 12 books, because I was like, that's doable. You read one a month. Yeah. How many have you read? I'm in a book club. Three? You should join my book club. Really? Yeah. We're reading Gone Girl right now. He's reading that. Are you serious? Yeah. Andy's reading that. Yeah. And my mom just read it, and I really want to read it. I keep telling him, don't tell me anything about it, because I want to read it. He says I would like it a lot. It's sort of... Although, funnily enough, is it... I never know. Is I it think it's funnily, funnily enough. It is funnily enough. It sounds enough, strange. It sounds strange, right? He was like, oh, it kind of reminds me of seven types of ambiguity, which you hated. I hated it. 
But I think he means that in the way that, because I read the, you know how Amazon lets you do like the look inside. Mm -hmm. So I did that. Um, I don't know. I think it took me into chapter five because they're, oh, okay. excuse me, they're fairly short chapters. Yeah. I could be wrong. But I felt like I got, you know, I was reading it at work, um, like in the background of all my windows. Um, and it lasted me a couple of days, like just whenever I could like click into that window and had time to like read. Mm -hmm. I was able to do that for like two or three days before I reached the end of the preview. So I got pretty into it and like it toggles back and forth between Nick, the guy's point of view, and the girl's diary. Oh, okay. So like his maybe wife's that's diary? yeah. Okay. Maybe that's what he meant because I know seven types of ambiguity was. I can't even remember why I didn't like it. You didn't like the first chapter, and then what was yeah. the first chapter about again? It was with the psychiatrist. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, it just didn't strike me. Yeah. Me. Um, okay, but that's funny that you're reading that because, like, well, I guess the movie's coming out, so that's probably yeah. why a lot of people are reading it. That's why I suggested it. Um, but, but you should join the book club. Okay. Okay. Anyways, it's uh, <laughs> a problem. Um, so yeah, I actually randomly just found this. It's um, the organization that puts it on is called Pasadena Roving Archers. So both of us made the trek out to Pasadena this morning, and you have to get there by, well, on the website they said you have to get there by 7.45, but today they were saying They that said that sometimes may, it fills up by 7.15. Yeah, so... They said a, usually it fills up by 7.15. Right, so it's a commitment, uh, but so worth it, and we were done by... 10? 9.45? We were yeah. driving away by 10. Yeah, so... So I if mean, you wanted to, like, I don't know, meet up with a friend, eat breakfast, drink mimosas afterwards, right. for instance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have the whole rest of the day yeah, yeah. to do that. Um, but, yeah, this organization puts it on, and they do it in Lower... Wow, I can't talk. Blah, blah. Lower Arroyo Seco Park, which That's is... hard to say. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, like a tongue twister. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is near the Rose Bowl, yes. not too far. It was just off the 134 freeway mm -hmm. near Colorado. And apparently they've been doing this in the park since 1935. 80 There's years. Yeah. 80 years. 80 but there was years. also a sign that we took a picture in front of, but they also claimed to be the oldest um, out, what was that? The oldest like outdoor Does it say on the sign? archery park. Or something like that. I will tell you exactly. Which I thought was funny because archery has been around since before. And they're the oldest really park in knew, existence. Yeah, the United States was around. It and says, they're claiming to be the oldest park. It does. Thank you for visiting the world's oldest field archery range. Yeah, I just find that very hard to believe. Maybe they just mean like, well, because it was interesting to me because the guy was saying, one of the guys was saying that. I mean, it's there. They leave all, I mean, all those hay bales are there, and they're only open on the weekends with, like, instructors and, like, equipment. But if you have your own bow and arrows, like, you can go there whenever you want yeah, and just shoot. Yeah, that was pretty shoot. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's what they mean, like, the oldest, like, Stand alone. set up and, like, you can go. I don't know. That would be interesting and probably worth looking into. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, so, but... Saturday, every Saturday morning, they offer a free beginner's class. And free, which is why we're free, doing it. Totally but, free. Yeah. Can't believe it. And there was maybe, what, like 30 people yeah. that took the class? And yeah. they have three or four different instructors. And mm -hmm. they give you all the equipment. Uh, and Arm they guards. Yeah. Uh, finger guards. Guards. Yeah. yeah. And what was really weird is they do this test to see which eye you're dominant. Yes. And we had how many people? Six or eight in our group? Something Seven, like that? Between six and eight. Yeah, yeah. And just so happened only me and this other guy ended up being left eye dominant. Yeah. Which I thought was weird because I'm right handed. And it was very bizarre to me that why would I be left eye dominant? But right. what they do is you have to put your hands up and you look. And it's not how you put your hands up because I asked the guy. Oh. But... They can tell, you put your hands which up, eye which you're eye you're through. focusing through. Oh, yeah. okay. So you, okay. So if you're listening to this, hold your hands up in front of you. So your palms are facing away 
and your thumbs are sticking out in like an L shape and a backwards L shape, like you were trying to set up a square to look through. And then tilt it so that there's just a small triangle where like your thumbs and your palm shape meet. And I guess you look through that and they have you hold that up and look at your, it's not your instructor, but the guy who's signing you in. And I guess he can tell which eye you're using to look through that hole. And that's what they do. That's yeah. interesting. I thought it was because my you right put, hand was underneath. Yeah. Which hand you put? Which hand was underneath for you? Your right hand? Oh, but it's your left hand. It's still my left hand. That was, yeah, it feels yeah, weird. Yeah, this to do feels it the other weird way. to put my left hand. That's so on weird. Way. So yeah, I ended up being left eye dominant, which I thought was weird because I have astigmatism in my left eye, and so you think that because my eye is not as good on, on the left side that I would overcompensate and use more of my right eye. Right. But maybe it's the opposite. Like Maybe you overcompensate with your left eye all the time, or like that's the one you use, and that's why you have astigmatism. Ha, ha, ha. Blowing maybe. my mind. I know. Uh, so I like. had the opposite way bow, I guess. Right. Did you get a different bow? Yeah, I oh, got a different bow. Oh, you did, because it had to be on the other side. Yeah, so it was kind of always awkward, because every time I would shoot... I'd always be looking right at yeah. the person next to me because they were right <laughs> eye dominant. It's like, hi there. Hey there. And actually, at the end, I ended up, when we were shooting for the balloon, um, I ended up trying to grab my arrow, and I hit the little girl next to me. <gasps> I think she, she hit me. She was, like, probably 10. There was a girl standing in front of me at one point, and she knocked into my leg with her bow. It was probably the same girl, because I think she... Was she I was being, black? Yeah. I yeah. was being very careful, and somehow I hit her, but she, I think she hit into me. Well, she hit me, for sure, and yeah. I was standing with my bow, because they teach you to keep your bow on your toe, so that it doesn't... I mean, because those things are tall. Like, yeah. Resting on my toe, it was probably up to my head. Yeah. Probably, and I'm 5'8". Yeah. 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 Um, Julie is tall. Yeah. Jessica is also pretty. You're 5'6". You're pretty I'd tall. I say I'm 5'6". Well, whatever. You look like you're 5'6". <laughs> I think it's all how you carry yourself. I wish I was 5'6". Why? Because I, I feel like I stand eight. taller. I feel like I slouch, slouch a lot because, because I'm so trying to make up for it. Because there's so many short people around you. Yeah. But how tall is Andy? 6'1". No, so good. How tall is Eric? 6. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hopefully that's right. I hope it's 6. <laughs> Sorry if it's 6'1". I think it's 6. Well, there are things that I don't know about Andy that I'm sure you know about Eric, so. I just happen to know how tall he is, and I look like a really good girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. You're welcome. But Terrible you have a ring on your finger, so I yeah. guess maybe you've done a better job so uh, far. Or maybe I haven't. <laughs> Next um, podcast, I lost the ring. Stop! <laughs> stop, stop. So Jessica's no longer engaged because she's married now. Because <laughs> it takes us a full year <laughs> to record another one. There are no other free things to do in LA. Yeah. <laughs> want, want. Um, no, so this girl like knocked into me. Yeah. And one of the first things we were taught, you know, they teach you etiquette. So that, because you do have to stand fairly close yeah. to the person next to you. What they do is they draw like a chalk powder line in the dirt, because it's just dirt, so it's going to wipe away. Um, and this place was really nice. It was really beautiful. Um, yeah, it really was. Yeah, and we were there so early... I just need to, I need to throw this out there. I don't wake up early for no, anyone she or doesn't. anything. Every time I open my eyes in the morning to go to work, I curse the day that I was born. <laughs> if the sun is not awake, I am not awake. And I got up and out of bed. I did it for Jess. I know. Because I heart her. Aww. Um, I also was like really kind of excited to do our Well, you want to be Katniss. Yeah, and I want to be Katniss. Yeah. However, if like you weren't counting on me, when I woke up this oh. morning, I was like, I actually like messaged Dandy and I was like, all I want to do is go to sleep. I just want to sleep. <laughs> but I like, I drove away and I was talking to my sister um, on my way out and I said, you know that I had a good time if I'm like saying I want to go back and do it again. Yeah. And it was so early. But because it was so early, it was like really nice out Yeah, still. it was very like, the pleasant. Weather was beautiful. And there's actually a fair amount of shade there except mm -hmm. for like that main archery area right. but where we were there was a lot of shade and I mean you know Pasadena it's probably 
going to be like over 100 there today. Ugh. But it felt like maybe 80s. Yeah, it didn't feel very Yeah, hot. it only got hot. I was wearing, I'm wearing shorts. I was a little bit chilly when we stepped out of the car. You're also wearing boots as well. That's true. Yeah. I love that you say that you were chilly when you stepped out of the car, but by the end of the archery, you could not shoot any more arrows because you got so sweaty and started to feel so hot that you just were flat out done. I was so <laughs> gross. I can't handle being hot or sweaty. I can't handle waking up early. I can't handle being sweaty. Like, if I start to get too hot, and I was like, I didn't realize how much it affected my emotional state. And then, in turn, affected my physical state because I couldn't even hook an arrow onto my bow. Oh, really? Because I, in my brain, I was like, I was picturing what it must look like for all of the places of my body to just be beating sweat. And I was like, oh, <laughs> my tank top is not, like, it's not um, absorbent. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. And I'm wearing this necklace, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm, gonna, I'm ruining all my clothes. I have jean shorts on. My feet are hot. And... In the meantime, I'm trying to, like, hook this arrow onto my bow. And I was like, you know what? I actually, like, took the arrow off. I put it back into my, is it called a quiver? Holster? Oh. I think it's a quiver. Oh, I like that. I could be totally wrong. So. Watch as, like, quibbler or something that sounds similar. So official like, of you. I know. Well, I put it back in my quiver. And I, like, walked away. And Jess was like, are you done? And I was like, I'm too hot. I'm standing She's back like, here. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, do you remember our instructor's name? Do I don't know that he ever gave it to us. I don't think us. he ever gave it, but he was a lovely man. He was, he was at really first, I, when he was explaining all the instructions and, like, the safety etiquette, I don't know if this happens to you, and normally I feel like I'm a very good listener, but I just wanted to tune out. He talked for a very long time. Right? He and, was And, like, maybe the timbre things. of his voice just wasn't conducive to listening yeah and there's all you know you're in a park and there's other people other groups had already started shooting there yes. so i was wondering why ours was taking so long i didn't long. even notice that i, just I did i kept looking over it was like was something different no i kept looking over and i was like they're I, they've been going for a really long time and this man is still talking i kept moving my weight from like foot to foot yeah because i was like maybe if he sees that i'm getting physically uncomfortable he'll speed it up he was big on analogies and examples, yes. and he would like tell stories that had nothing to short stories, like just little quips. Yeah. About things that had nothing to do with archery, but that he tied back into archery to kind of like teach us a lesson. But I feel like we were the group that knew the most at the end because we weren't banging our bows into the people I standing agree. next to us. Yeah. And he was even correcting other people's form uh -huh. at the end when all the groups came back together. So yeah, maybe it was it was worthwhile. And, like, you were doing better by the end of it. Yeah, because I did not start off. So I don't like when I'm not good at things. I have a really hard time if I don't pick something up and can just do it. My instinct, which is terrible, is to then just be done and be like, well, you're not good well, at that. Well, but you played sports your whole life. So you're, yeah. like, really good at athletic things. So I can see how that would be frustrating if, like, something doesn't come naturally to yeah. you. Yeah, and especially if something's awkward and then that whole... The left thing. thing was bothering me, and so I ended up fighting it and being like, I think this is wrong, and he tested me again, and again, I was left eye dom dominant. And then I've also now learned, though, which I think is very strange, I can't just close my right eye. Like, he was like, close your right eye. I can't physically do it. No, I can't. Really? Can you close just your left eye? Kind of, right? So you're not a winker. No, I can't wink. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally bizarre. <laughs> so weird. I've learned a lot today. Learned yeah. That can't wink. I can't left wink. Eye I'm left eye dominant. And um, something else. I'm sure there's and, a whole bunch of stuff in there if we dig around. And about archery. Yeah, and about archery. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. I really had a lot of fun. And I really do want to go do it again. And Jules was really good at it. Thank you. She got closest to the bullseye several times. Uh, before she got too sweaty. And yeah. Well, in our, like, learning area, it was nice, like you said, nice and shady. So, yeah. like, it was nice. I didn't have to think about anything. Yeah. But, okay, I'm the opposite of Jessica in that I'm not naturally very good at things. That's like, not true. Especially physical things, though. Like, I'm good at some stuff. I couldn't give you a list right now off the top of my head. Um, I'm good at video editing. There's one. That's good. That's one of my skills. Um... But one I didn't grow up playing sports. Right. One of one. <laughs> <laughs> one for one. 
But like, it's, you know, sometimes I'm just good at things and I'm like, what? And then I think I'm good at it and I go try it again. And I'm like, I'm so good at this. And then I suck at it the second time. I feel oh. like sometimes I just have beginner's luck. And then I start to overanalyze it too much, and I start to really try to, like, change up what I'm doing. Yeah. And then, like... But he even mentioned that with this, because I don't know if you saw what he was talking to me, because I would hold the bow too long. Yeah. Because I was trying to aim, and every time I tried to do that, it wouldn't go anywhere close to the target. And I guess they tell you that once you have the bow in position... You should take no longer than four seconds. That's very to um, release your bow and air, or release the arrow. And that's because your muscles start to get too worked. Like you're yeah. holding this. Something interesting. The guy who was signing us in. I think that you were standing right next to me when he said this. Who ended up becoming your best friend? You hated him. BFF. He was so ornery. He was seemingly ornery yeah. at the beginning because he came to sign us in and. Uh, Jess's friend Nicole was with us as well. Um, she's just not here for the podcast. Yeah, I mean, I guess she didn't want a mimosa. <laughs> Too good for her us. Podcast. Whatever. <laughs> we love you, Nicole. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> what? What? Um, so he at, he was like, "Your name, please," and she said, "Nicole." And then um, before he said how many in your party, he had finished writing the word Nicole, and Jessica was like, "Jessica," and he went, "Nicole." How many in your party? And I turned to Jessica and just like, you know, in my way, I was like, oh, I guess he doesn't care about us. And I like said it with a smile on my face. And what did he do? He just like made eye contact with me yeah. and walked away. Yeah. Like, so awkward. He just was not having yeah. it. Yeah. And then he was very demanding in the things that he was doing. And he was like, sign this side of the paper only, not this side of the paper. And he wasn't abrasive. No. He just wasn't friendly. Yeah. But then like... He made some joke about me being famous someday, and... Yeah, you wanted to keep your signature, and... Yeah, and Jess was like, oh, look, BFFs. And then he, yeah. like, checked in with me at the end, and he was like, so did you end up having a good time? I and know. Jessica again was like, oh, look I at said that. to Nicole, I was like, wow, BFFs. best friends. <laughs> what the heck? But, like, no, I do want to go back. But, so he actually mentioned, and I think you were standing right there, mm-hmm. um... That it's not about, archery is not about aiming, which I found to be interesting because oh. I always thought that it was. Yeah. It's about correct form and um, posture. And he said it's a lot more like dance than it is like anything else because you have to like get your body to be comfortable and like your muscle memory to, you know, know yeah. what you're supposed to do. Oh, interesting. And the way our instructor was showing us, there was all this business, we won't be able to just like verbally describe it as well as we could show it but no. um when you pull uh the bowstring back is that what it's called a bowstring i think so um you're resting your hand on your face and like if you go take this archery lesson you'll know what that means which but, we recommend which we recommend yeah. highly mm-hmm. highly recommend it was so much fun um if you rest your hand on your face that's what steadies it so your body doesn't really do anything I mean, Katniss makes it look like a whole different beast. Yeah, (laughs) but yeah, it was more about being still and having the correct form and not even, because you picture it and you think they're pulling the string and snapping it, it, and it's more like you let go. And it was interesting because he did mention that. You don't let go, you stop holding it. Right, exactly, (laughs) you don't let go. Yeah, because there's a distinction, which Uh you probably won't know just from listening to us. Once you do it, Once you do it, they... You'll be able to tell the distance. Because that, it took me a long time to be able to figure that it's out. It's hard. Even. It's hard. Cause Which is probably a metaphor for life because I have a hard time letting go and just. Um, Maybe like you don't have to make that effort. Being Maybe you in just the moment. Stop doing whatever you're doing. Yeah. Like I have trouble letting go of control. Right. And so like then just knowing. like next time, just try to just, just stop just controlling stop things. Just stop. Easier said than done. But he no, also, so our easier. instructor. <laughs> Also sort of um, made the correlation between like yoga and meditation and saying like it's all sort of the same thing, which Mm -hmm. is I think pretty fascinating Mm -hmm. because I just started doing yoga and meditation this year. year. Yeah. Oh, you told, oh, this year you told me about that. That's really interesting. Do you like that? Do you find that it keeps you more calm during the day? 
I love it. And I, I haven't been brave enough to actually go take a class. I just go on. Oh, really? Yeah, I just go on YouTube and do the yoga classes on YouTube. So, which is good and bad. Like, I hurt my wrist earlier in the year. Definitely oh. from incorrect. Like in, a, like, in a bad way? Or, like? Yeah. Well, I mean, not in, like, a horrible way. But, like, remember, I should, like, you kept be like, why? Were you wearing a brace? I had to wear a brace at night. Oh, okay. For months. Yes. Yeah. I heard it in March. And it was just supposed to be, like, six weeks. Mm -hmm. And I wore it all summer long. I only just recently stopped wearing it. And actually, this is... I'm twisting my arm, mm -hmm. you can't, or my wrist, you can't see it, but this is the first time that it hasn't hurt to go like this, and it still really? kind of hurts. Oh. Yeah, I, something with yoga where I didn't have the correct form. Mm -hmm. um, form is very important. Yeah. For some things. Just with anything, really. Uh, but I love doing yoga because it calms me, and it makes me feel good, and I, I'm not flexible, which I always thought was because I just wasn't a flexible person, but I didn't realize when you play sports, mm -hmm. you become less flexible. Oh, why is that? And when you run, thing. and I don't even, I'm not a runner, like, I'll go on runs, but, like, I have friends that do marathons and are runners. I'm not a runner, but I don't know. There's something with your muscles and... What if you stretch and do sports? Does that help Well, I would effects? stretch, but... I mean, what if you, like, really, like, spend time, like, because I know that there are stretches you do, like, before a run so that you don't hurt yourself. Right. But, I mean, like, what if you really spent time, the time. Like, focusing on your flexibility? Well, see, and now that's what I do. Even at, every time I come back from a run, I'll stretch for, like, 10 okay. or 15 minutes just to try to really get those muscles. Has yoga going. made you more flexible? I think so. Okay. But it's not like, oh, I can do the splits now. And I no, and there's some stuff that I just can't physically, yeah, and, like, I can't do back bends or stand on my head or, like, some of the poses. I'm like, no, my body doesn't do that. But I can't. I and can't. even with meditating, I find that it's hard just to quiet my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't go for, like, 15 minutes is maybe the max. And okay. even during then, I have to focus myself and be like... I have to start saying thinking a lot. Oh, is that like your little trick to be like? Yeah. Okay. But mantra I, is that what it's called? A mantra. That's oh, good. I like, I like that. that. I read it pretty well. Oh, so nice. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of people. <laughs> I liked that book though. I loved that book. It gets a bad rap, I think, sometimes. I don't understand why. I, it was just a good time. Yeah, and it was, it was nice. her story. Yeah. I think it got a bad rap because people were like, "Oh, this like." sort of wealthy white woman was able just to quit her job and go do this. Yeah, but good for her because she was in a place, she was also going through a divorce. Right. And, like, and she was a writer depressed. and she used it, to, like I think she was writing freelance or she told them she was going to write an article mm -hmm. about it. Like, and she sort of already was living a lifestyle that was conducive to that. Of course, someone who's, you know, working minimum wage doesn't have that luxury. Well, I'm not, but... But, like... I'm certainly not on salary. <laughs> right. Um, but, like, that was... The thing is, like, with a memoir, nonfiction book like that, that's her story. She's not saying, like, everyone... This is just everyone's experience. Go to Italy and then go to India and then go to Bali and just try to live. Like, that's silly. Like, I didn't read that book and think, like, how am I going to do exactly that? But you take whatever yeah. lessons you can. I was going through a breakup when I read that, actually. Oh, and really? I feel like because of that book, I was able to gain, like, a little bit of perspective. Like, mm. you know, it t I didn't read it very quickly. I, like, kind of tried to sit with it because I felt like there was so much to take in. Yeah. And I was at a point where I was looking for life lessons in everything. And, like, being in that kind of mindset, I felt like I just kind of wanted to take my time and, like, mm. read something. And when something really stuck with me, I'd, like, reread it. And then I would stop very shortly after that part. Oh, like, I don't okay. read by chapters. I just am like, okay, this is a good stopping point. Yeah. And I'll remember, like, what it Where was Where you are. Yeah. Um, so I would just, like, kind of stop as something hit me and sit with it for a little bit. And, like, I felt like by the end, it, you know, I was kind of, like, I was more healed than I was when I started. Oh. So it was nice. That's nice. Yeah, it was really nice. You should rank that as, like, an Amazon review or something for the book. Maybe I should. Maybe yeah, I'm serious. I'm not being, her. not being sarcastic. It maybe came out <laughs> sarcastic. Not being like, no, I can tell. Well, because I can see your that facial expression. Like an Amazon review or something. Oh, that's nice. Why don't you go tell someone else about that? <laughs> yeah, never. Don't ever tell it to me again. <laughs> never. No. Um, but getting back 
to yes, archery this is because... something actually very important. Um, they are the people of Arroyo Park, Pasadena. Um, they are trying to close this archery place down. So after we yeah. raved and raved and raved about it, um, there's a motion to try to close it down, and I don't really see why. Yeah, so it's a group. They call themselves Stewards of Public Land, which oh, is stupid. You have to respect uh, a steward. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and their ultimate objective is the removal of archery from lore. I just can't say lower. Apparently. Lower. When I, I, I think it's when it's with lower Arroyo, Arroyo next Park. to it, when I'm reading it, my uh -huh. brain is like, why? Uh, <laughs> it's the removal of archery from the lower Arroyo Park. I just don't understand. Yeah. There's a, our instructor was telling somebody in our group who specifically asked him what the sign was about, about the petition. Because the sign that we read to you in the beginning about the world's oldest, see that's hard for me, world's oldest, oldest. archery uh, field. Huh. Field range. That was too many words to say very <laughs> slowly that way. Um, it does say at the bottom of that sign, please sign our petition and, you know, help save our park. And then it gives the petition link. Um, and so one of the kids in our group asked, well, young men, I suppose, yeah. not a kid. Um, he asked our instructor, and I guess there's, there's like even a house that's like 600 yards up the hill. Yeah. We couldn't even see it. I, I looked for it, it after yeah. he said that. I could not see any house. And uh, I guess they're claiming that like we, like we, the people of the classes, lob arrows into their backyard. And like, I'm sorry. We're new, and this was a beginner's class, and only the beginner's class, like, the beginner's class is the only group of people to use the hay bales with the bullseyes that yeah, face this person's yard. that's true. I couldn't hit that house if, if I tried. If I tried. I could First barely all, get it to the target. It. Like, we were only, what, I think it ended up being 10 feet away? Yeah, we were allowed to shoot from 10 close, yards. Close, 10 yards, yeah, yeah. Very close distance. Well, I think he also said that the people in the neighborhood want to walk through the park, and yes. the archery club is getting in the way. But again, no, not getting in your way. Just walk around. Just walk around it because there, you know, there's a path. There's a really nice path, and then it deviates into yeah. the archery park, and it's you it's know not a very nice small section. area of yeah. that park. And um, I mean, I just think that it's a little bit unfair to say, no, I want to walk in this specific area, yeah. and I don't care that you've been here for 80 years. Yeah. And the instructor, like, made the comment of, like, you know, if you wanted to have – golf courses are really nice. If you wanted to go have a picnic lunch in the middle of a golf course, you probably wouldn't do that because it's dangerous. So, I don't know. I just feel like this is such a fun activity. Yeah. It gets people out of the house in a day and age where, you know, people don't typically wake up on Saturday mornings no. to go do anything when they can just sit at home and be on Facebook and, you know, exactly. read articles. And, and there were a fair amount of kids. It's a nice activity yeah. for kids It was. And they had a kids class. I had it's never been nice. to that park. It was really pretty over no, there. Oh, and we went and we had a nice meal afterwards, like, and then we came back and drank mimosas, like... You know, we're not only putting money into their city right. and then recommending that other people go put money into their city, which is a beautiful Pasadena is a beautiful oh, city. Pasadena I would give money to that city. Beautiful. If I time. live I live on the west side, but if I lived anywhere closer to Pasadena, I would go there all the time. I, I yeah. I lived in South Pasadena for a summer and spent a fair amount of time down in Old Town and all mm -hmm. that. Pasadena is great. Nice. Yeah. Andy and I want to move there. Do so, you? Yeah, when we get our job situation worked out, like we've talked about it a number of times and I um, messaged him on my way there and I was like, I love Pasadena. Every time I come here, yeah. I just want to live here. And he was like, so let's do it. So like, you know, it would be nice to know that if I wanted to wake up and drive down the street five minutes, I could go do, do this archery. archery. So I don't know if anywhere else that does it. No, I, I mean, until I was researching stuff, I had never yeah. seen anything like this before. So if you guys are interested in the Pasadena Archery Club, uh, all you do is you go to, well, to sign the petition, you go to PasadenaArchery.com, and there's a whole section about um, this petition that's going around trying to save the club. And um, the city council meeting is actually in October, so it's coming up. So oh, okay. if That's you're really time. interested in archery, maybe try to go before October just in case it gets shut down. But I have a feeling 
that it won't. Um, I feel like usually with stuff like this, when enough people hear about it, and especially people they really that have been coming, to this, exactly, because so. it's part of history too. It is. And there's not like we said, there's nothing like this out there. And mm-hmm. again, if you knew this was in your area, why you did you move there? It to it's it, to me, it's sort of like if you move near the Rose Bowl, and then you're like. Well, well why, why are there football games and concerts and there's so many people walking in my neighborhood? Well, no one told you to move there. Right, exactly. Everybody knows this is here and, and like, it's in the middle of a neighborhood. It's the same reason you don't move by an airport if you don't want to hear planes all the time. Like, yeah, get it together, people. None personal, of the, none I feel of like a lot of people in this day years. and age just don't take personal responsibility for it's themselves. It's true, they and want to blame everyone else. And, which yeah. I'm, I'm, I will admit, I'm guilty of at times. Like... That's just, you know, yeah. the way that people are, I think. But right. But in this instance... They're going to be taking right something side. away from a lot of people. Yeah. And you I never know who could just be um, a prodigy at it or a genius at it mm-hmm. and head to the Olympics. Rio a real 2016. Yeah? <laughs> exactly. Uh, but if you're also just interested in taking the free class, you just go to rovingarchers.com. That's R-O-V-I-N-G. Roving. Since I'm having Roving. trouble talking today roving um rovingarchers.com and they have this free beginners class but then every saturday at i think 9 30 30, they have their um, intermediate or next classes and it's still only five dollars to sign up for the class so very very affordable yeah and you can just become a better archer yeah and then like we said when if you're really really into it you could just go buy your own equipment and then Go to this park and just do any day of the week want. and do whatever you want. Aren't he did say the bullseyes aren't there during the week? Oh right, okay. Um, but you but could buy your own bullseye. You could buy your bullseye. He said Target. that some people use Starbucks cups, um, just like the paper cups. He also said some people use playing cards. What he does, I mean, he's much more advanced than we are, um, and we'll wrap this up in a minute. But what he does is he shoots an arrow and then he tries to get all of his other arrows to hit his uh, arrow, nice. which I thought was really interesting in a way to, like, get really precise. I'm not there yet. No. I'm not yet. Because we're going I should have just going. said I'm not there. We are. I really want to do that. Yeah. So this has been the very first the inaugural hey. episode, if we're going to be fancy, <laughs> of How Will I Know with Jeff that's and what, Julie. That's what we're going to call it. How yeah. will I know? Because how and Julie. will you know about this stuff going on in LA if you just not have us? Right. To if guide we didn't you. tell you, how would you know? And yeah. how will you know if you like something if you never try it? So go try archery. Right. Look, it's a double, double entendre. Yes. Tune in next time <laughs> for um, more free things in LA. Yeah, we haven't planned it yet, but we'll find something really good for you guys. Hell yeah. Thanks All right. for listening. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>